Why did he have to do things so different than common culture accepted back then? Why did God the Father, the Maker and Creator of all things, choose to come to this earth in the body of an infant born of a virgin? Why? Why did everything that happened in Jesus' time make things look so different? I told you there was a couple things that drew my attention to this book. And the first thing was the author's name <coughs> is Bruce Main, M-A-I-N. And as a kid, I was a Batman nut. Huh. Batman's name was Bruce Wayne. And it's just out of the corner of my eye, I caught the author of this book, Bruce Maine. I'm like, what would he write that would talk about Jesus? Something I think we need to understand. The only reason why God came to this earth as a man, as a baby, was because he knew no person on this earth at that time and that generation or ever throughout the end of time could perform the tasks he needed done. Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed to God, pass this cup from me, but if it be your will, I'm ready. And the cup wasn't passed from him, was it? I couldn't have done it. As much as I love God and love serving Him and want to be part of Him in every way, I don't think I could have done that. Knowing the beating and everything that was going to happen. Christmas is coming. The celebration of the baby Jesus. I, I All the way up here, I, every channel I turned my radio to had Christmas songs on. Christmas is coming, the celebration. WBCL kept saying, catch the spirit of Christmas. What's the spirit of Christmas? Jesus Christ, amen. Can you imagine God in heaven looking down on the earth and seeing the condition that he sees every day and taking the time to create himself flesh to be a savior to the entire world. I would picture God coming as Donald Trump. All the money in the world, uh -huh. buying all the TV time and commercials he possibly could to share his good news across to everybody. And I'm sure back then there were rulers and kings of, that had all the possessions as much as Donald Trump did. But he didn't, did he? He came as a baby. Born in an old lonely stable to a carpenter and his new wife. Who would picture God himself coming that way? <coughs> Talked a little bit about that. Who would picture God coming that way? You know, we as parents, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas, I think we have all said at some time in our life to a niece, a nephew, a son, a daughter, I would trade places with you if I could. They might be sick. They might have just broke their arm. They might have been in a car accident. And when we love somebody that much, if it would be possible, we would trade places with them, wouldn't we? But yet that's exactly what God did. He loved us so much. He created himself to be one of us, to come into this world. And to walk. And to live. And to feel the pain we feel. 
and to feel the sufferings we feel and to feel the letdowns that we feel. The difference is Jesus suffered, bled, and died so we can have right standing with Him. God Himself became flesh, came to this earth, suffered, bled, and died to prepare a way for us to come to Him blameless, spotless, and clean in His sight. Wow! Tonight, I want to look a little further here in our study. I want us to talk about the subjects of Jesus breaking the rules. We first need to understand at the core of Jewish religion was what many, many scholars referred to as the politics of holiness. Jesus' time when he was born, there was a number of Jewish leaders that judged people or graded people on what was called personal purity. Personal purity. What constituted personal purity was what you put in that offering plate. In Jewish times. How many lambs you brought for sacrifice. What you did. In the church. Automatically you were considered. Holy and righteous. If you populated the plate. Brought your offerings in timely fashions. And followed the law of man. Now, it didn't matter what was going on in here. It mattered what everybody was looking at, what everybody was seeing. <clears throat> you see, Jesus crossed the road for that kind of thinking. Growing up, my dad used to call it stinking thinking. Thinking that don't make sense. Jesus crossed the road. We learned that in Jesus' time, you really believed that and you had a basis to believe in your checkbook. Whatever you had, the more you gave, the holier you were. Community status, political views. Sometimes I think our government's still that way. But Jesus crossed the road for them too. You see, when we take our eyes off Christ and we start making sense in our head of what's going on and what's being done, we get rather confused. We get rather like we don't really know what we think we know. We get it all figured out and then it falls apart. I was almost sure Ohio State was going to give Michigan a run for their money yesterday. <laughs> and up to two minutes to go in the game, we had it all figured out. And it didn't happen, did it? Stinking thinking. Quit thinking so much, guys. Trust God. This morning in Sunday school, we talked about worrying. And Kristen said, Dad, there's a Marine saying, you can sit in a rocking chair and worry. But all you do is think and go nowhere. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Why? Why take all that energy to worry? Why not trust God? We talked once about a right Ronco dehydrator. Remember? You said it and you forget it. That's how life is. God, I'm going through this. I need your help. I'm going to give it to you. And now I'm going to thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I'm going to set it. 
and begin <coughs> and turn my trust to you. Trust in you in all things. Romans chapter 3, verses 5 through 11, page 799, <coughs> tells us this. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing His wrath on us? Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness, and so increases His glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result. Their condemnation is deserved. What shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Not at all. We have already made the charge that the Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands no one who seeks God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for Your Word, Lord. And I pray tonight, Father God, that the words of this sermon will be sweet sound to people's ears. That You open our minds and You open our hearts and we'll be able to understand and receive Your Word this evening. Lord, this time we come. We come to worship You, Father God. We come to lift your name in song and praise. And Father God, we trust you to hear our prayers, to hear our thoughts, and to help us all through this service. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place to minister. And we thank you for the gift of our Holy Spirit. And Father God, we ask that you watch over this service now. Allow the things to be said that need to be said. And allow us to grow and learn more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When I was reading these verses, I got a little confused. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, if they're going to say, talk about me like that, I might as well just do it. If they're going to treat me like that, I might as well just do it. Huh? Have you been there? I think I've said it myself. Especially when Dad was getting angry with me. And I didn't do it. And he was sure I did. And I probably did. How many times? Have we been accused of doing something? We may have not even been there. <coughs> but we got to blame. Does that mean God's grace is stronger? No. It says right here, if the unjust brings out God's <laughs> righteousness more clearly, why aren't we all unjust? Well, guys, we are. We are unjust. It says here, no one understands. No one understands. I don't understand. I try. <coughs> this gets in the way a lot. There are stories after stories of how Jesus happened across these situations in the Bible. We cannot be evil so that people can see good in our lives. We can't go out talking to talk and then expect to walk the walk. <coughs> we can't do it. We can't ride the fence, guys. 
We can't be mad at the world one day 